Hello fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to my channel. This is Karen with a C at Crafting with Karen and we're still diamond painting on red poppies. We've made quite a bit of progress, we're ready to keep going and do some more get to know me tags. I've had a lot of fun talking about myself last time. I guess these blogs are a lot of talking about yourself. Uh, so let's let's get on to some more questions. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. Hopefully I hit the button in the right direction to zoom in. Yeah, one way or another. There we go. You can do it. A little more, a little more. Get to the right setting here so we can do some diamond painting. The uh, app that I use to be able to see what I'm recording, to see what you see, is on my iPad. And it isn't the most responsive. It, it doesn't, like, it takes a second for it to catch up sometimes with what you're seeing. So bear with me when it takes me a moment. I have to double check. Anyway, uh, so today is very early morning on Sunday, April 7th. I just finished watching Live PD, which is one of my favorite TV shows. And I'm going to do a little more diamond painting before I go to bed tonight. So I, I don't sleep, by the way. That's one thing you should know about me. I really, I sleep at really weird times and in weird patterns. Like I'll sleep for a few hours, then I'll be up, then I'll sleep, then I'll doze off later for a couple hours. So I don't sleep like through the night like a normal person for eight hours. So let's go ahead and uh, get going on some diamond painting here. Let's see if I can, see if I want to zoom in one more notch here. A little more. Let's see if it'll refocus. Come on, focus, focus. Nope, it's too tight. It's not focusing. Let's go back out. There we go. That looks a little better. Okay, looks good. So let's see. Where were we? So the next get to know you question that I'm going to talk about uh, that I kind of remember talking about once already here. Uh, do you speak any languages and how well? Well, I do. I, obviously, I speak English. Haha. Ha. Uh, I do speak some French. I learned it in school. Uh, took it both in high school and college. I'm not fluent by any stretch of the imagination. But I did discover when we went to we went to France for our 20th anniversary. That would be now six years ago. And before we left, I had two opportunities to improve my French so that I would be ready to, for our trip. The first was I listened to a podcast called Coffee Break French, which I enjoyed very much. Uh, Coffee Break French, and they have other languages too. I know they have Spanish, and I believe they have... Um, actually, I don't know. I just know they have other languages as well as French. Um, you know what? I just realized I'm wearing the wrong glasses. I'm wearing my regular everyday glasses, which are bifocals. Those are these with the black ends. And uh, when I'm diamond painting and I'm looking through this magnifying mirror, I should really be wearing these with the sort of tan ends. These are my computer glasses. They're, the entire frame is designed, or the entire lens, the whole thing, is for like a medium distance, like as if you're looking at the computer, or in my case, doing my diamond painting, as opposed to far distance on the top and close distance on the bottom, like by hopefuls. Okay, so now I've got the right glasses on, I can see what I'm doing. So Coffee Break French. So the idea behind this podcast is it's like 15 minute episodes. So they're, you know, designed to, for to take in short bursts. And it's intended to be, to help you use, to learn enough of the language to use if you're a tourist in, you know, a country that speaks that language. So the lessons are geared toward restaurants, hotels, transit, uh, you know, travel type stuff that you would need to know if you were traveling in a country, most likely as a tourist or maybe as a business person, I suppose. Um, and so it really focuses on those areas as opposed to teaching you how to speak the language so that you can have deep philosophical conversations with people. That's not what that's designed for. So I listened to quite a few of those episodes before we left, and that really helped me a lot. Um, some of it was new. A lot of it was reminding me, uh, pulling the French out of the back of my brain that I had learned in school and reminding me about uh, how to, you know, how to speak and, and vocabulary. And, and then a lot of it also helped with not so much like slang or idioms, but just 
the the phrases that you're likely to use in in specific situations when you're when you are traveling so i found that once we got there it definitely did help i was able to conduct transactions in shops and restaurants um even if the people that i was talking to didn't really speak english so that was that was good it did just what it was supposed to the other opportunity that i had leading up to that trip uh, i had volunteered with uh, an adult i'm trying to remember what it was and some kind of adult learning center or something here uh, in my area. I don't remember the name of it now. I'd have to go back and look. Um, but it was to, to, it was volunteering to meet with adults who were from foreign countries who wanted to improve their English and just wanted to have someone to converse with. They, they spoke English, but they just wanted to have someone to chat with to improve and practice their English. And it turned out by coincidence that there was a young couple who was here. Uh, they were on, you know, work visas. They were here for a year or so, I think, from France. And they had requested to, to be part of this program. So when the director of the program, or the, the person who was running it, coordinator, whatever you call it, uh, called and said, listen, I have this couple from France. Would you be interested? Of course, I jumped at the chance because I, even though I really didn't speak enough French to actually converse with them in French, um, it was just a wonderful opportunity for me to practice a little bit of French with them. And then, of course, for them to, to practice their English with me. And between the Coffee Break French podcast and the opportunity to speak with these this very sweet young couple, they were in, like in their 20s. He was a chef and she was... I'm not sure. I don't remember what she did. She might have just been a waitress or something. Um, I think it probably was him that was here on his on the work visa as a chef for some amount of time. Uh, that it was just it was perfect. Um, we would meet, you know, like every week or every couple of weeks. We you know meet for lunch or just coffee, and we would just chat. And they would help me with my French, and I would we would chat. I would chat with them. I would correct their English as necessary, although it was not usually necessary and uh, we had a really good time so those two things together prepared me pretty well for our anniversary trip to France we were in Paris for a week um, we had we were um, trying to decide where to go and what to do I was doing a lot of research online and I was looking at like all-inclusive resorts in the Caribbean and stuff but I wanted something a little bit special. I didn't want just the same old, same old. So I, you know, we were willing to spend a little bit more money and, and, and we wanted a good, you know, a nice experience. So I was looking at places that were not, you know, the bare bones, cheapest places. And it suddenly occurred to me that if we were going to spend that amount of money anyway, why don't I just check into Europe and see like what, what would it cost? You know, how could, was it, was it doable? And lo and behold, it was totally doable. I found this website. Um, it wasn't Airbnb. I want to say it was maybe HomeAway, um, where we where I found this little studio apartment. It was in the 17th arrondissement, uh, which is right not too far from L'Arc de Triomphe, the Arc de Triomphe, and uh, it was right near a metro station. <laughs> we actually had a Starbucks right downstairs from the apartment, right like next door. So that was kind of funny. Um, and a boulangerie, which is a bakery and, and uh, bakery and you know pastry shop uh, at each end of the block, and that was kind of nice because we would get our get our French bread and our pastries. I'll tell you all about our Paris trip another day. But basically, point of this was we had a good time. It was not too 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 terribly expensive, and uh, I got to practice my French. So that was that. Uh, the next question is, are you single or taken? Well, not as easy a question to answer as you might think. Uh, I've been talking about my, our anniversary trip and I, I mentioned in the past, we have been married for 26 years. My husband, Michael, however, we are in the process of divorcing. Um, we have not actually filed yet, but, um, we're, and we're still living in the same house because I have yet to. I need to find a job, really, before that we can afford for me to move out and afford to be able to have two separate households. Uh, bear with me. I'm just grabbing my next color here. Um, I need to pour some more out. It's tough, but it is what it is. And 
That's all I'm going to say about that for right now. Uh, as this channel progresses, I'm, I'll share with you, you know, where things are and my, my journey through this process. Uh, but for right now, bottom line is, yes, we're still living in the same house. No, yes, it's uncomfortable. No, we're not sleeping in the same room. And we'll go from there. All right, what's next? Let's see. Um... I'm skipping some of these. How many siblings do you have? I have one sister. Her name is Amy. She lives about an hour away in the suburbs of Boston. And she is three years younger than me. And she works for Starbucks Corporate. As a, She's a manager. Um, she's been there, gosh, 10 years at least, I want to say. Um, and she does very well there. She enjoys it very much. Um... And we see each other probably about once a month or so. Uh, probably maybe we're going to see each other a little bit more now because uh, going to visit her for a few days here and there is my way of getting out of the house and having a place to stay that I don't have to pay for a hotel and stuff when I need to get away from things here. So uh, I just spent a few days at her house last weekend, brought my diamond painting, of course, set myself up on her kitchen table, and Diamond painted for like three solid days. It was wonderful. I had a great time. And she has a very sweet, cute dog named Bella, who is an Australian Shepherd. And Amy had to go out of town for a couple of days, so I watched Bella and sort of house sat and dog sat. And uh, had a lovely time at her house for those couple of days. Let's see, what's next? Um, do you use a PC or a Mac? Right now I'm using a PC laptop. I do have an iPad and an iPhone. Uh, but for my main computering, it's a PC. What are my morning... I don't have routines. That's not that's not a good question. Um, let's see. One thing about me that you wouldn't know. Well, you know very little about me, which is why I'm doing this, of course. One thing about me that you wouldn't know. Um, let's see. Well, my most recent job that I had to leave recently, I was a casino dealer, which I loved. It was so much fun. And I will tell you all about it in another video. This is just a teaser to tell you that I did it. And it was cool. It was a lot of fun. And my favorite thing about it, one of my favorite things, I mean, I loved a lot of things about it, but one of my favorite things about it was when people would say, what do you do for a living? I got to say, I'm a casino dealer. And it was just a great conversation starter. Um, I can't do it anymore, unfortunately, because it it became very difficult to do physically. I was on my feet most of the time, and uh, I I am getting older. I'm getting some arthritis in my hands. Luckily, I can still diamond paint, but as I just sort of stand, stand here and stare at my canvas and not do anything. Uh, but it was really affecting my dexterity uh, and my ability to manage chips and cards and and you know, deal smoothly and effectively. Excuse me, I need some more wax. So I, I unfortunately had to leave that job, even though I really enjoyed it. Um, and hence why I'm now looking for a new job. Um, uh, type of job I'm looking for now, I think I mentioned in a previous video, I've done a lot of different things over the years. I've had a lot of sort of secretarial type jobs, administrative assistant. I don't really want to do that anymore at this point in my life. Um, first of all, it doesn't pay that well. And I really want something that uses more skill. More, and I'm not putting down secretaries or administrative assistants, believe me. It can be a very rewarding job. You can, it, you can really enjoy it. It's uh, I'm by no means implying that there is anything wrong with it. But for me personally, I just am looking for something a little bit more, um, a little more challenging for me personally. And I'm hoping that I can find a job in the software training area. It doesn't really matter what company specifically or what industry that company is in specifically. It doesn't need to be the type of training that I did in the past because a good trainer can train anything. As long as I understand what I'm training other people on, I can be a good trainer. Uh, the type of stuff that I do is not so much, um, like I'm not, I don't do like networks and hardware and routers and, and that kind of stuff. I do like the end user software, the, the stuff that the actual person is actually going to use in their day-to-day -day jobs is the stuff that I am good at training on. I'm, I'm one of my 
very best skills is explaining complicated or complex information very clearly and breaking it down into, you know, manageable, understandable pieces. So I hope to be able to find something in that arena. Uh, I'm looking on LinkedIn and Monster and Indeed, and all those types of job hunting websites and keeping an eye on those listings. I need to figure out if there's maybe other things too that I would enjoy that I should be looking at. Uh, the area where I live, um, although unemployment in New Hampshire is very, very low, which is good for job seekers, but it's not the most populous place. Like it's not like Boston or the Boston suburbs as far as the the density of population and the density of, of job availability. Uh, it's somewhat limited. And I, I really don't, I'm uh, commuting to Boston is not realistic. It's, it's way too far for a daily commute. Um, I don't really want to be in the car very much more than, you know, 30 to 40 minutes each way at the most. And I'd like it to be closer to 20 to 25. Um, so I'm primarily looking around my area, which is pretty much Manchester and Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, although I could look as far as like Lowell, Massachusetts or Concord, New Hampshire. Those, that would be the south and the north sort of limits of how far I would really want to drive. And once I know where I'm working... That will also influence, once I move out, you know, where I look for a place to live. Uh, ultimately, yes, I would like to buy again. I, I, ideally, I'd like to buy some type of condo where I don't have to worry about any maintenance, you know, the outside and mowing the lawn and shoveling the snow and all that kind of stuff. Um, just not up for that. But, um, and uh, buying something... And even with the homeowners association fees and you know condo fees, whatever it is, is still less expensive than renting in this area. Renting the rental rates around here are insane. Um, a two-bedroom apartment, which I would really want to have at least two bedrooms, so that Jordan would have some place to live when he's with me. Um, it's like fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month for any place that isn't sketchy. You know that you wouldn't want to live there anyway. Like it needs to be at least that amount. Um, right now the tentative custody agreement that we have, uh, is that Jordan would live in the house full time. Mike would live here. He would live with Mike here during the week. And then he would be with me on the weekends, either at my apartment or wherever I live, or possibly that I would come stay at the house on the weekends and Mike would just take a hike and go off wherever he goes with stay with, I don't know, his girlfriend or wherever. I don't even know. Um, so it's, it's less of an urgent question right now because I think I mentioned uh, in a previous video, but I'll, I'll mention it again. After much deliberation and thinking about it and talking to various consultants and counselors and people at school and everything um, we've decided to send Jordan to a wilderness uh, sort of a hybrid wilderness boarding school kind of therapeutic place in Maine uh, he's failing school it's it's pretty bad uh, and things are so tense right now at home oh, quick it's really just a problem so by doing that, we're hoping that he's going to have an opportunity to improve his attitude, improve his grades, and generally just be in a better place than what we can provide for him right now at home. It's ridiculously expensive. I'm not really sure how we're going to pay for it given that we have a divorce to pay for and um, we owe some money on taxes and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but my mom and Mike's mom are both going to help pay for it. So that'll take some of the financial burden off of us. Uh, it's still, we're still kind of figuring out the finances for it. But uh, so he's going to be leaving for that school in about a week. We're going to bring, we're going to drive up next Sunday and bring him, bring him to school Monday morning. So once he's away, that's going to change the entire dynamic in the house. Um, Jordan, as much as we love him, and as much as we 
you know, want to do the right thing for him and everything. He is, he's a challenge. He's always been a challenge. He has ADHD and some other issues and he is um, quite defiant and disobedient and oppositional with us. And part of it's our fault. We've sort of created a monster in the way that we've parented him up until now. I won't deny it. But nevertheless, it's a problem. And right now, we all agree that the best thing for him is to not be here. So once he's at school, like I said, it's going to change the entire dynamic of, of everything in the household to have him not around. Uh, I'm not quite sure how things are going to be with Mike when we don't need to interact with regard to Jordan and co-parenting him for the amount of time that he's away. He's probably going to be gone six to eight weeks. Uh, but then when he gets back, he's going to be home for a couple of weeks and he's going to turn around and go to summer camp where he's gone from the last several years and he'll be there for eight weeks or seven weeks. So realistically, he's not going to be home much for the next three to four months. And that's going to give us an opportunity to make this transition for me to find a job, move out, start creating a new life for myself, and go from there. So, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off on this video. How long have I been talking? You know, my app that records me does not tell me how long I've been recording. Let me look on the camera itself and just see if it says on there. I think it probably does, but let me just look. Um, no, no. Oh, yep, yeah, it does. Let's see. Oh, oh, it's only been 21 minutes. Oh, we can keep talking. Never mind. We'll keep talking. It's very tiny on the screen, though, boy. <laughs> it's hard to see. Now I know where to look, though. Anyway, so where did that come off of? That came from um, one more thing that you didn't know. Oh, yes, that, I'm, that I've been a casino dealer. Amazing how you can get off on tangents when you're talking about yourself, isn't it? All right, let's see. So let's see what others can get to know you questions. So here's extended questions. Um, what is your favorite Netflix show? That's an interesting question. I wouldn't say that I have one favorite. I like Orange is the New Black. I like... House of Cards, which is over now, although I still have the last season of that to watch yet. That whole Kevin Spacey thing, that was wild. Uh, I've always liked Robin Wright. She's pretty cool. Um, lately, the show that I've been binging is actually on Amazon Prime, and that's Farscape. I watched it when it was first... Let's see, did I... You know, I don't think I actually watched it when it was first on. I've seen the whole series before. I think I've been through it once before. And I actually have the DVDs, but I never watch DVDs anymore. Um, and it came came on to Farscape, uh, excuse me, came on to uh, Amazon Prime just in the last week or two. And so I decided to rewatch that. So I've been binging that one from the beginning. Right now I'm about midway through season four. And then I'll watch the final wrap-up movie, which was called The Peacekeeper Wars. And it's very enjoyable. I, I like the series. So that's been good. So I've been watching that lately. The other show that I was binging recently, uh, I think I'm on like this, I want to say second to last or last season of, and again, I've watched this one this through two or three times at least, is the show called Numbers, which stars Rob Morrow and David Krumholtz, I think his last name is, and Judd Hirsch. And I always have liked that show very much. Um, it's your basic procedural crime of the week. Uh, uh, what did I say? Um, did I say Don Morrow? That's not his name. Don is his character's name. I forget it. Rob Morrow uh, plays uh, Don, who is an FBI agent, and his uh, David Cromwell's plays his brother Charlie, who is a math prodigy genius, uh, applied mathematics professor at the um, at the University Cal Sci, which is supposed to stand in for Caltech, presumably. Um, and then he has a, a co-worker who's his, uh, his sort of his mentor professor, and then his fiance is also a math professor there. And uh, he uses math to solve crimes. They use a lot of um, what they call combinatorics, which I'm not really sure exactly what that is, but seems to have to do with a lot of data mining and data analysis. And 
every episode they they use some type of math equations and algorithms and computer programs and whatnot to help Don solve the crime of the week. But what's really awesome about the show numbers that I really like the best is the relationships, particularly between the two brothers and their dad. Judd Hirsch plays their dad. You might recall he used to be on Taxi. And they just have this amazing relationship, the three of them. Every episode ends with, with a sort of a little vignette of, it's a more, of a more personal nature of, of the three of them, often the three of them, not always all three, uh, that's sort of humorous and, and sort of shows how much they love each other and that they're there, you know, they're there for each other. And I, there's just something about their relationship that I really do like. So if you, if you like procedurals like CSI and, you know, those kinds of shows, and uh, I recommend you check it out. It's, it's pretty cool. It's a good show. Uh, get through the first couple, ep you know, few episodes because it's a little, it's a little more stilted at the beginning when when they're trying to sort of explain what the whole premise is and and some of the little voiceovers that Charlie does are kind of silly. But once you get into it and you get into the relationship with the two brothers and the dad, I think you really enjoy it. So let's see, what are we up to now? So we're up to 26 minutes. So if it's going to cut off at half an hour, I better stop talking. So uh, this has been a Diamond Paint with me, getting to know me chap. Still working on red poppies. This is Karen with a C at the Crafting with Karen channel. Thank you so much for watching. Please like my video, subscribe to my channel if you so enjoy, if you so desire. And I will very much look forward to speaking with you again soon. Uh, please leave me a comment. Let me know how you think it's going. If you have any suggestions or tips, I'm always happy to take constructive criticism. Uh, if it's negative and mean, no guarantees I won't delete it. No, kidding. Uh, but I hope you'll be constructive. And uh, if you are also a vlogger, diamond painting or otherwise, other crafts, please leave me a link to your channel because I would love to view your videos as well and subscribe to you. It's a mutual thing here. I'd love to get to know you as you're getting to know me. And uh, I would also be very interested if, you're, if you'd like to leave me a comment in how you have your stuff set up. What kind of rig you use for your camera and your microphone and your various filming arrangements that you do to make to to set up your space for filming i would really be interested to hear more about that maybe see some pictures of it so thanks again for watching and i will again talk to you soon bye bye